Hi everyone. Welcome to Naughty Yarnies. My name is Barb. Today's Tutorial Thursday. And today we're going to be making a scrubby. It's four inches by four inches. Only uh, six rows by 12, I believe it is. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Actually by 12 stitches. 11 stitches and chain two. So 12 stitches if you're counting the chain two as a stitch, which I do. So it's um, an easy pattern. Just might not be real easy for beginners because you're working with some tool that you're making into your own yarn. Okay. And you're using cotton yarn with it held together. So that might be the tricky part for some of the beginners, but it may be possible for you. So try it and see how you like it. Um, I used to sell these by the hundreds at my craft shows. I'd have a little cute little basket, sell them two bucks a piece, and I would make like crazy because the people bought them for stocking stuffers and teacher gifts and things like that. So very easy to make, very quick, takes literally five to ten minutes depending on your crochet level. And just throw them in the dishwasher, hand wash them real quick if you if you don't want to lose them. But yeah, just I just throw them in with my, with my silverware in the dishwasher. Works up real easy. So here's what you need to make to make this scrubby. Enjoy everybody. Let me know down below how you liked it. For today's scrubby, you're going to need some cotton yarn, some tool. You can buy this at Walmart in Canada here. It's $3.97 a spool. I use an electric bread knife to cut it into four pieces this size. I cut this in half and then each half in half to get four of these. You will need a five millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a darning needle in order to enjoy today's pattern. So first thing you want to leave a little tail so we can darn that tail in after. And you're going to make a slip knot. Oh, we're not going to make a slip knot yet. Silly me. You're going to use this like it is yarn, okay? So you're going to put it with the yarn ball. Sometimes I put that in my yarn bowl with it. And there's no need to entwine the two or anything, just however you want to put it together. It doesn't ma it doesn't matter it throughout. It'll be kind of variegated throughout the pattern anyway. But just hold it together like it's a yarn. And you're going to make a slip knot with both so you have both sitting there. So you have the yarn and then you have the tool and it'll fall however it falls. It's okay either if it's entwined, if it's sitting beside, however, it doesn't really matter. All right. So now we're going to just chain 13. It might be a little tricky if you've never did this before. One, two, three, four, five, six, they all get stuck, like the, um, kind of get stuck on the cotton yarn, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, but as you pull it through, and you, if you have it through here, you'll notice it kind of makes it like a, thread like like if I was just to hold it like this it would be more flat but because I'm pulling it through my fingers it's making it almost like a type of yarn right right away and you can see how it looks you can see the scrubby and you can feel it as well so the next row what you're going to do is you're going to find the first third third chain from your hook one two three so this one here where my thumb is you're going to yarn over and you're going to double crochet into that third chain from the hook okay and then you're going to double crochet your way right across and by the it's it's tricky at first especially if you've never did this i've made hundreds of them it's been probably two years since i've made any I guess it's, just, it's like riding a bike. It, it just comes back to you. 
because I've did just so many of them. I've did round ones, I've did square ones, I've did some with just tool only. If you're using just tool alone without the cotton yarn, you would need to make it a lar larger because it's going to make it almost thinner than a four weight yarn. So actually probably the size of a four weight yarn, but because it's only like with the four weight yarn and the tool held together, it is actually more like a chunky weight yarn. But using the five millimeter hook makes it nice and tight, the stitches. So that's why I like the five millimeter because any other, I've tried it with the larger size hooks and it's just too holy. And then you get the food caught in there and things. So these last a really long time in case you didn't see my video talking about them. They last about at least six to eight months, at least. And uh, what I liked about them is you could throw them in the dishwasher or you just throw some soap on it, wash it by hand and let it air dry. Okay, we're done our first row. So we should have the starting chain, which was we went into the third chain. Remember that? So that first part that we skipped, that's the first counts as the first double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But if you want, if you're just counting double crochets, you're going to get in just eleven. Okay. And then we're going to chain up two. One, two, chain up loosely. And you're going to turn. Now you're not going to go into the one that's underneath the, the um, chain. You're going to skip that one and go into the next chain space. The next uh, double crochet, I should say. And you're going to double crochet into that sp space. And you're going to double crochet across. Two. Three. tricky part trickiest part of this is getting is pulling the the tool from the the roll and your cotton from the yarn and getting them all twisted up honestly if that's the trickiest part and then making sure when you grab your hook when you're pulling it around that and then pulling it around again for your double crochet that you have it all on the hook because if you don't it's gonna let's see if I could get it to do that if we don't, say we go in here and we don't have the tool, we just have the, it's going to be sloppy. So you want to just make sure you get it all through just like it's a piece of yarn. Because if not, it's going, that little piece that you didn't, you missed is going to snag on dishes or your fingernails or something like that. So here we're coming up on our last stitches so we should have two four six eight ten eleven and one more is twelve again I'm counting my my chain too look at this it's creeping up on me again my chain two is counts as a double crochet now just gonna get to the end chain two loosely and turn you're going to continue that row until it's a square i'm not i can't remember how many rows because i don't have one finished here to remember but if you just pause the video i'm sure i'll tell you once i get to there it'll only take a second virtual time right all right, I'll meet you back here at the end and I'll tell you how many rows it took for me. There we go. I ended up with six double crochet rows. Quick, huh? So just remember to keep your chain two at the beginning pretty loose, as I said, because then it gets harder to get into that chain, the second chain, when you're going back across the next row. So you want to make sure that the chains are pretty on the loose side. So you could also make this if you wanted to go a little bit further, do a few more rows to make it more of a rectangle than a square. You're welcome to do that. 
this I find just the perfect size. This ends up being a four inch square and I've always sold these. I've sold these for $2 at my craft show. They go like hotcakes. I don't even have to put them three for five or anything like that because people just know that they're just that marvelous. Throw them in the dishwasher, they're done. Throw them in the washing machine. Just wash them by hand real quick with some soap and water on the air dry, like I said. Easy peasy. So, okay, so we're done the last row. We're going to leave a little tail end. Okay. And then pull through. Make sure to pull through your both your cotton yarn and your tool. Okay. Now you're going to have to darn in your ends. This might be a little tricky for you at first, but for myself, I just always go in the middle part and thread that through my needle. I always buy a needle that has a large, large uh, eye on it. Let's see how large the eye part is on it. Okay. And then when I'm weaving my tail in, what I tend to do is go back and forth three times so that it stays tucked in there really well. So, and I go on the ridge where there's, um, where you could see all the loops on it. So it's kind of getting meshed in there. So you don't really, you won't see this. Okay. So I'll go one this way and I'll go back making sure to go under some other loops at the same time that I didn't go through the first time, I guess. Okay. And back three times does the trick for me. I've never had these keep really tight. I've never had them fall out. So even if a little piece does, it's not going to make a big issue here. And we just snip and there we go. Continue to do your other one and you'll have a nice little scrubby. Listen to that very scratchy you can use this on your face if you if you can handle it it's not like really really rough but i mean if you need to get rid of some dense skin cells it will work awesome also so for more uh ideas like this and more tutorials please subscribe i'd love it if you did join me along for my journey i've got lots of different tutorials i've got lots of learn how to crochet videos i've got some podcasts, some vlogs, some old yarn talks, all kinds of things like that. So love it if you subscribe. Have a great day, everyone. And until next time, bye-bye for now.